Hey everyone, it's Dominic, also known as TikTok. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at a recent R&B production that I did on my M1 iPad Pro. Uh, we're going to look at uh, from the beginning where I recorded acoustic guitar and then I processed it as well as uh, different instruments, iOS instruments that I used and effects that I used. So I'm really loving the M1 iPad Pro. It's really allowed me to expand my production capabilities on the iPad. Uh, I can do uh, fuller productions, do actual full mixes on the iPad now. I can mix down my beats and not have to go elsewhere to kind of mix those beats down. I can do everything on the iPad. It really gives me a lot of headroom to do that. So we're going to look at this R&B track that I did. Again, if you like content like this, make sure you hit like. Also subscribe to the channel. It gives me some encouragement to keep making content like this for you guys because I really want to do that. Uh, and bring you guys the best content that's that's meaningful and useful for you. So we're going to look at this R&B track, go through it, break it down a little bit. Uh, I promise it won't be too long. And so let's just get into it. All right. So here's the track. Let's just listen to it. Okay, so that's the track. We're going to break it down. So you heard the acoustic guitar in there. Let's look at that part and see how I did that and processed it. So here's the acoustic guitar part. Let's just solo it. And that's without effects on it. All right. And then I have a secondary part here. So the secondary part there is just kind of doing some fills, uh, just kind of adding more depth to the acoustic guitar vibe there. So um, let's look at the processing. How did I process this acoustic guitar? Here are the effects. So I have a six band EQ. That's just the stock EQ from uh, Beatmaker 3. And I'm just doing some low cuts there, a high pass in a low cut. And then I have a little top uh, cut as well to kind of uh, take the edge off, if you will. Uh, after that, I have a Rough Rider. And that's doing some compression at a 5 to 1 ratio. Just enough to kind of tame it. Uh, those transients on the nylon acoustic guitar can be pretty sharp. So just trying to tame it, round it off a little bit, uh, make it smoother, basically. All right, after that, we have Tape Pro, which is one of my new favorite plugins to use along with time machine from four pockets uh, tape pro is doing some interesting things so tape pro will emulate uh, tape effects artifacts uh, it also has a built-in delay some saturation it has all sorts of things and uh, tons of presets that you can kind of go through um, but this is what I ended up with once we put the tape pro on All right, so we're using the delay that's built into the Tape Pro, uh, as well as some other uh, kind of effects like the wow. You can see the wow here. I have certain depth there, and that's just kind of giving it some some of that lo-fi type of vibe, uh, and just just kind of making it a little more vibey. Really, is what what the goal was there. Uh, let's look at the uh, other acoustic part. So the uh, other acoustic part that I kind of added just for depth. It's not doing too much, just again, high passing, low, low cut, a boost in the, the high mids there. Um, and then some Rough Rider again to smooth it out, kind of round off that top end, uh, have everything kind of just settle down. And so together, both of those parts, you have this. Great, so that's the acoustic part. Let's look at some of the other elements that I added to this production. So after I did the uh, acoustic guitar, um, I added some drums. Let's listen to those. All 
All right, so some drum samples that I snatched from uh, Native Instruments kits. Uh, this came from the Velvet Drums kit. So most of my uh, drum kits, I usually put low fly dirt on the master of that just to kind of give it some more beef. I just kind of give it a little vibe, give it some glue as well. I didn't do that in this case, but I do have some equalization going on using the Tone Boosters EQ. Uh, just kind of a lift in the high end there, just kind of brighten it up a little bit. And then some barricade. Barricade is going to be doing some some gluing as well. If you look at the compressor. We have a four to one ratio on the compressor. That's going to be like a bus compressor. So it's uh, just kind of gluing things together. Not really doing too much on the output here on a limiter. Nothing there for the drums. Just more uh, kind of some bus compression if you will using the barricade from tone boosters all right so that's the drums i have my beat tag there and then next we added some bass so this is from bass delicious and the patch that i used is going to be this is bass delicious 2 and we're using the big pedal let's listen to that and see how that sounds by itself So it's kind of it's kind of pushing it a little bit. It's kind of driving um, the low end and kind of driving the whole track, uh, uh, kind of flowing with the guitar as well, um, and kind of pushing it along, uh, which I think is a nice vibe. I like that kind of slide. It has a little portamento in there uh, to give you a little glide. Uh, I think that kind of adds a little vibiness to it since it's an R&B track. Um, so that's a good vibe for that. Let's look at the next instrument that I have here is going to be a digital D1. I don't think I used that, but it's set up in this particular template. So I have a pure synth it looks like. And the instrument we're using is a Rhodes Dry Suitcase. So I use this. Normally I would go to a Neo Soul Keys um, Rhodes type of sound, but this is probably the first one that I just kind of picked out. I just needed something that kind of fit the build and kind of just set in the mix, if you will, so we can listen to that. All right, so that's going with the guitar progression there. Let's hear both of those together. So I think the Rhodes kind of fits, it kind of gives it a little more warmth uh, when you couple it with that uh, kind of high end nylon uh, guitar sound and together, you know, they just kind of work beautifully, I think. Next instrument that we have is going to be another pure synth and we're using, looks like a lead sound, it's called Buzz EP Stack 2, let's hear that. So it's a vibe. It's a vibe, basically. It's going kind of along with the, the roads. They're not really clashing too much. The roads kind of has a little more movement, uh, kind of doing some counter uh, type of things or what have you. But I kind of wanted to put that a little in, in the back a little bit, not stand out too much, but just enough to give it some vibe. So that's that sound. Uh, I think the next sound here is another Pure Sense Platinum. So you see Pure Sense Platinum. It's kind of my go-to instrument on the iPad. Uh, it has a lot of bread and butter sounds. It also has a lot of vibey sounds that I like to use. So let's look at that. So this one is called Ambient Soar. All right, and that's what that sounds like. Let's hear it by itself, and then we'll hear it in context. So not a lot going on there. 
but if we listen to it in context so it's kind of tucked in in the background there you know just kind of giving some extra little eye candy uh, ear candy if you will uh, so let's look at the next sound it looks like I have a chompler in here. I love chompler. Um, makes me think of using an ASR 10 and that whole workflow of, of sampling stuff and being able to manipulate the samples and whatnot. I love chompler. So let's listen to chompler by itself. So as you can see, I'm using the slick talk uh, sound and it's basically a chop there that I'm using with some echo or delay, if you want to call it that. Um, and that's just kind of adding a little rhythmic aspect to the production. So let's hear it in context. Right. So adding that little rhythmic element to it on the chorus part of the track. Here is the channel strip for it. Here's the breakdown. So we have a Rough Rider 3 doing some compression there. And then we have an auto pan. So I wanted to kind of swing the side from left to right uh, just to add some ear candy, if you will. I like auto pan on things. Uh, just kind of make it interesting for the ear and not have things just so static in in the, in the mix uh after that i have a chorus to add some thickening there and then zero reverb is off so i'm not using that and then i have stereo widener uh, so we're using that to kind of widen that stereo field so that the auto pan left to right is just a little bit wider and then i am uh high passing that a bit at 324 just so that it's not muddying up that low mid area and the lows as well um, especially after using a, a chorus which is going to thicken up a sound i like to use a high pass to kind of clean it up a little bit so it sits in the mix a little better so that is the chompler adding some more vibe to this track and then it looks like i have a synth master instance here so let's look at that This is kind of an airy lead uh, sound, and you know, I just kind of tucked that in. So let's listen to that by itself. Wait for it. That's essentially all it's doing, is just kind of adding some little uh, accents in there. So let's hear it in context on the chorus. All right, so you just heard like a reverse cymbal. I think that's coming from my uh, velvet drums. Let's see, which sound is that? Where is that sound? All right, so found the sound. Here it is. All right, let's look at that particular sound. I might have some effects on it. All right, so this is kind of a crash cymbal. We're we'll gonna take the effects off so you can hear it dry. I wonder if I reversed that. Yeah, so basically I took a crash and I reversed it. That's it playing forward. And then we reversed it. All right. And then after that, I added Fact Phaser, which is another plugin that I really like to use because it just adds a vibe to anything, basically. And so with that, it sounds like this. All right. And then you just add a delay, and I mean that's that's game over for that one. I mean that's that's a vibe. I mean you tuck that in the mix. I mean it's it's again ear candy, ear candy, you know, making it interesting for the listener. Also like to put fact phaser on on hi hats, 
you know, give them a different vibe. It's it's a wonderful plugin I like to use. All right, so that's essentially the composition of the the uh, track. And so here's the arrangement. It's kind of set as uh, intro verse. Uh, chorus verse type of uh, arrangement and that's what I went with the bridge is basically a breakdown it's not a true bridge where it actually goes to a C section where you know the composition changes or whatever it's basically the same loop just kind of broken down so let's look at some of the mix aspects of this All right, so you see I have two aux returns here. This first aux return has a tone boosters reverb. I love using tone boosters reverb. It's, it's very silky, lush. It has a ton of different presets that um, are uh, traditional reverb sounding as well as uh, kind of effecty. So they kind of give different vibes there. And then I have another reverb return here with another tone boosters reverb. So. I'm affecting two different types of uh, things with these uh, reverbs. So you can see here are the guitar channels and I have sends going to the first aux return. That's the first tone boosters. Uh, and then I have this pure synth. I believe this was the uh, that road sound that's going to that first reverb as well. And then my drums are actually going to a different reverb. So down here, the drum bus. I just sent the whole bus to the the reverb actually normally I would break that out uh, and only send specific things because I don't necessarily want my kick going to the reverb sometimes but here you can see how some of these elements are also going to that reverb not sure why I have the bus or the master of that going to the reverb but it sounds fine so you know if it sounds good to you go with it the drums again are being processed by an EQ for some lift as well as tone boosters barricade to uh, bus compress that. Uh, and then we have our B tag, bass delicious, processing with some compression from Rough Rider 3, some EQing going on, taking out some of the high end, controlling those low ends, and then another dynamic. So I'm using a dynamic compressor with some side chain so I'm side chaining you can see I have kick here which is the kick I'm using out of that drum kit doing some side chain compression on the bass to kind of uh, make sure the kick transients are getting through and I can uh, even out the bass and the kick uh, so that they kind of sound cohesive and sound together right on the roads we just have some EQing going on I didn't do a compressor on it I didn't feel like it needed it didn't sound like it I, I very well could have, but I don't like over compressing my instruments in my mix. I, I like things to kind of feel alive in some sort of way. So it's basically just doing some cleanup and the low end area on the roads. Uh, next on the other pure synth, which was kind of that uh, sound, it, that lead or synth kind of pad sound. Again, doing some cleanup here. The uh, Tone Boosters EQ is not on. Uh, we have some auto panning. Again, I like to give some ear candy in the mix in terms of the spatialization of things. And then we have a compressor to kind of tame it all. Here is the other pure synth. This was the sound. And basically we're taking some high end out of that and then also some more <laughs> auto panning. Um, I didn't think it sounded like too much auto panning going on in this so you know it sounded fine to me so you tell me what you think if, if it's too much here's the chompler zero reverb is off we're doing some stereo widening on that as I explained before and then some high pass on that let's go to the synth master synth master it's that airy sound so I didn't feel like it really needed anything um, so I didn't put it on there here's the first acoustic guitar the main loop part uh, again, we're doing some high passing, cleaning up the low end, compressing, and then that tape pro to kind of give it some vibe. The second one, we just high passed it, uh, increased the high mids, and compressed it a little bit. Nothing too much, and both of those are going to a reverb. And then that's about it. So let's listen to the chorus part of this production one more time, and then we'll close out.
All right, so that's that production that I've done completely on the N1 iPad Pro. Again, on my older iPad, I, I probably wouldn't have been able to do as much as I did on this particular production in terms of the instruments as well as the effects that I added all in real time. Um, but thanks to the new technology of the N1 iPads, I'm able to do so much more. I can do complete productions now. I feel very comfortable about doing that. I feel like I can go in any session with my iPad and a MIDI controller and be able to work and not be stifled or anything. So, you know, shouts out to Apple. Kudos for uh, the accomplishment on getting all of that processing power in this form factor. Uh, so that's it for that production. I hope to bring you guys great new content uh, in the future. So stay tuned. Make sure you like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.